to me, and I, I sing it quite a lot, so, uh, <clears throat> I'm rejoicing in the Savior every moment of the day, since He gave me this heart of love. On and on we walk together in the hallelujah way, since He gave me this heart of love. Since He gave me this heart of love, clouds no longer are dark above. There is something I can feel that makes me know that God is real. Since He gave me this heart of love, I can tell the world the story how the blessed Savior came. Since He gave me this heart of love, how he took away my burdens, lifted me from sin and shame. Since he gave me this heart of love. Since he gave me this heart of love. Clouds no longer are dark above. There is something I can feel that makes me know that God is real. Since he gave me this heart of love. Having changed my way of living, there is glory all around. Since He gave me this heart of love, I can feel the Spirit moving when He sends a blessing down. Since He gave me this heart of love, since He gave me this heart of love, clouds no longer are dark above. There something I can feel that makes me know that God is real since he gave me this heart of love. Amen. Like I said, that song special to us this morning and I, I'm glad the Lord took away that old stony heart and gave me a fleshly one, uh, one that I'm able to feel. Uh, you know what, not only uh, in times I can feel the love, the presence of God is, is, a, is a very important thing and I, you know, as a child of God, to know that he's there a God whom I, I've never seen and no man's ever laid eyes on him, but uh, uh, you know, I'm gonna tell you, I know he's there by what's in my heart. So uh, uh, we love that song this morning. Got one more, <clears throat> we're gonna try to sing and uh, uh, it's been on our heart this morning. So number two, Heavenly Sunlight. Walking in sunlight all of my journey over the mountains through the deep vale. Jesus has said, I'll never forsake thee. Promise divine that never can fail. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah. I am rejoicing, singing his praises, Jesus is mine. Shadows around me, shadows above me, never conceal my Savior and God. He is the light in him is no darkness, ever I'm walking close to his side. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah. I am rejoicing, singing his praises. Jesus is mine. In the bright sunlight, ever rejoicing, pressing my way to mansions above, singing his praises, gladly I'm walking, walking in sunlight, sunlight of love, heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, Flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah. I am rejoicing, singing his praises. 
Because Jesus is mine. Amen. You know, we look out this morning, that song uh, uh, came to our heart, and uh, you know, the beautiful sunlight uh, uh, shining down, but uh, you know what, most of all, you know that the grace of God and uh, the blessings can shine down as well this morning, and uh, uh, you know what, we like to say we love the Lord this way as we begin to get started, and uh, uh, we thank each and every one of you for uh, being with us this morning, turning into us, and uh, uh, we pray the Lord bless you by coming this way, and uh, uh, maybe you'll get something out of what's said or done here, and uh, uh, you know what, like I said, we're much appreciative of, uh, of maybe this opportunity to be able to uh, speak to maybe some that we haven't seen in a while, and uh, uh, you know what, the Lord's blessed us beyond measure, I can't even begin to put words to it, And uh, uh, but I know He's better than good to me, and therefore I need to be uh, uh, what I can be for Him, and uh, you know what, I believe that's to be uh, trust and, uh, trusting and obedient unto what He'd have me do, and uh, you know, I know He called me to preach the Word, and uh, uh, you know, I didn't understand why, I still don't sometimes, but uh, uh, you know what, so we want to do our part, and I ask you this morning, morning uh, as you're at your home wherever you might be uh, this morning uh, uh, you just begin to do your part and uh, you know that that's a thing uh, I believe God has an ex expectation of you and uh, he knows what you can do what you can't do and uh, uh, you know what and, and, and he don't expect any more or any less so uh, uh, you know what be obedient this morning uh, I pray that if you ain't already made preparation and made yourself ready to serve the Lord this morning uh, uh, do that now uh, you know what I think it's a very important thing uh, uh, to go to the Lord in prayer and uh, I begin to make sure that all things are cast out of the way uh, uh, that you may be able to worship him in spirit and in truth because he truly is the spirit. So, uh, uh, you know what? The spirit don't dwell in any unclean thing. And uh, uh, so, you know what? This morning, as we get in, uh, uh, we want to do all things of the spirit and uh, and the leadership got us the direction in that. And uh, uh, so, you know, this morning, y'all pray for us this morning. Uh, uh, we're a little bit under the weather. And, uh, uh, you know, we've been like that for quite a while. You know, I got bad allergies with asthma and everything. But uh, the Lord's always seen me through it. And, and uh, I might have to stop and take a drink every now and then. I've got a little water right here next to me. But uh, I know with a prayer and, uh, and effort, for putting forth with the Lord, he's going to be able to uh, see us through on it. So uh, uh, first we want to start off, uh, I tell uh, Brother Ryan, Sister Angie, happy anniversary this morning, and uh, also it's uh, Granddaddy's birthday today, so happy birthday Granddaddy, and uh, I don't know if you're on here or not, but we love you, and I uh, appreciate each and every one of you, and uh, uh, you know what, but uh, another thing is, is we know that we're now a week away from Easter, and uh, our, you know, a Resurrection Sunday is what it might be best called, and uh, uh, you know what, we know that this morning, because that's where our hope lies, Is uh, uh, so we're looking forward to it, and uh, uh, also, we want to make the announcement, and we and we made a Facebook post yesterday about it. But uh, uh, next Sunday night, we'll be beginning our revival. And we're not uh, putting our revival off, and uh, uh, we're going to continue on. I believe we're already in the midst of a revival right now. And uh, uh, but you know, ours was scheduled to be on, on Easter Sunday night. Brother Daniel King is going to be bringing the messages, so we're going to hook up something some way uh, if we have to go out to the church or whatever. But uh, uh, we're going to make it happen. Uh, the Lord's going to make it happen, and uh, uh, you know what? And then I'm, I'm praying for His presence, and that's why I believe in revival is always key. Is uh, is not just uh, a praying for revival, but uh, that God's presence be there, and then revival comes whenever that happens. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I've heard that scripture said over and over again. Saturday this morning, uh, once again, uh, over in Second Chronicles seven and 14, thirteen and fourteen, we might as well add that thirteen in there too. Uh, you know, that's a very special scripture. But I, uh, you know, what I was thinking about this morning is that God, uh, He said He would hear. And when he hears, then he would forgive sin and then heal the land. So uh, you know what? Uh, repentance has got to be had. God will hear that repentance and then he would forgive the sin, which is a, uh, the first most important thing this morning, is that God forgives sin. Uh, you know what? So uh, uh, you know what? If he didn't do that, uh, uh, wouldn't none of us have a chance this morning. So I, I'm, I'm thankful for a God that's able to forgive and he can also forget. And so uh, uh, you know this morning, that's why we are what we are right now, why we're in the presence uh, of him at this given point. And then, uh, uh, so this morning we got a little message we're going to try to get across to you and uh and uh, once again we want to invite you uh, if you got prayer requests to uh, add them in on here and uh, uh you know what let us all pray for you and uh, uh you know what we've been having some prayer requests here lately and uh, uh put in there and uh, you know what uh, i believe the lord uh, he, he desires to hear them and uh, you know what allow them to be put on here uh, god's people pray for you uh, and I, I, I believe things can get done that way i believe in corporate prayer so uh, uh you know as uh, uh before we get into today's message we're going to go to the lord in prayer and uh, i ask you to pray along with us right here and once again, I, I think it's important for you to remember that, uh, uh, you know what, we may be leading this morning in the prayer, but uh, each and every heart needs to be opened up and ask the Lord to come in and invite him in. So we're going to go to the Lord in prayer, and after this, we'll get into the message. 
Uh, dear Lord, we'd like to thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you've given us, dear Lord. We thank you for yet another opportunity to gather in your name this morning. And uh, uh, we pray, dear Lord, that each and everything be said and done. Uh, I'll be according to thy will, dear Lord. And uh, uh, that when it goes out, uh, uh, that it'll uh, t touch the hearts in the way that you'd have it be. If it uh, uh, be in that sweet, small way, dear Lord, I uh, would pray that it happened that way. Or maybe it, it'd be a pricking of a heart and uh, uh, pulling that conviction spirit out upon them, dear Lord. We just pray today uh, uh, that, that, that your will be done in that and uh, whatever way you see fit. And we pray once again, uh, we do nothing of ourselves dear Lord, and only what you'd have us do, and uh, I would pray today for those who are out in the world, maybe struggling right now, and uh, uh, you don't, don't, maybe don't know what to do next, and uh, uh, we know sometimes we have fear of that, dear Lord, and uh, but we know that when fear, uh, uh, that perfect love casts out all fear, so we pray, dear Lord, today as we trust in you uh, uh, to take care of every situation of life, and uh, I pray, dear Lord, for those that maybe have the ailment of the body, and uh, I pray that you reach out and you touch them, uh, uh, give them a little peace, a little comfort right now, dear Lord, and uh, uh, whatever way you see fit, and uh, I would pray that maybe one day uh, uh, we know that you will, that you're going to work it out, dear Lord, uh, uh, that we can gather back together in the house of the Lord and uh, uh, begin to give you praise, glory, and honor there, dear Lord. And uh, uh, Nevertheless, uh, right now, uh, uh, we give you praise in each and everything that we do, and uh, uh, we thank you for the opportunity to uh, have to be able to uh, put things aside and grow closer to you, dear Lord. And uh, uh, the opportunity is always there, and uh, we know that you provide that, so we thank you for it, dear Lord. Uh, most of all, dear Lord, we remember this morning uh, uh, those are lost and undone out in the world and don't know you in free, free part and forgiveness of sin. Uh, I pray Pray that today be the day that you pour out conviction upon them, dear Lord, and uh, uh, prick their heart uh, uh, different any sins ever stained, dear Lord. We just pray uh, uh, that you just reach down and you touch them in a mighty way, and uh, uh, they begin to turn to you for it's everlastingly too late. Uh, uh, we thank you for everything you've done for us in life. Uh, uh, we ask you to forgive us where we failed and come short so many times, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, so our, uh, this morning, uh, as we get into it, and uh, you know what, uh, I, we've had time to study a thought out, and uh, uh, you know what, that's one thing, like I said earlier, uh, I believe we can begin to realize is that we now we have time uh, you know what we like to make excuse of many things in our life and uh uh, you know, and uh, that we're just too busy a lot of times. But now I, I, I seem to find myself got a lot more time. And so uh, I, I think it's always best to invest that in the Lord and the Lord's work. And uh, uh, you know what, most of all in His Word and in prayer. And uh, uh, you know what, by doing so this morning, I, uh, you know what, we, we're able to get deeper into the Word and get closer to God. And I, uh, you know what the Scripture tells us, if we'll draw nigh unto Him, He'll draw nigh unto us. And uh, uh, so you know what, I pray, my prayer for you this morning is that you do that very thing. And uh, I don't know what situation you're in. Uh, uh, if you've been saved or you haven't, been saved. Uh, uh, the Bible tells us that we must be born again, that we must be saved uh, uh, and, and, and come unto Him. But uh, uh, you know what? This morning you may be saved. You may be in a condition maybe where you're not as close as you want to be. Well, I'm here to tell you one thing. Uh, I, I believe the Bible tells us that we're exactly as close as we want to be. So we can make that decision right now uh, to turn from our ways and begin to get closer to Him. And so uh, uh, we encourage you to do that today. And uh, I think that's what this is about. Uh, you know what? It's a, uh, you know, I, I don't understand God's ways and we might get into that here in a little bit, and uh, uh, you know what, he has his own method of doing things, but uh, uh, in knowing that right now, uh, we need to be able to realize is that uh, he's purposed this time in our life that we be able to, uh, uh, to focus on him a little bit more, and uh, uh, you know, uh, as, I, as I begin to look into the scripture and see what it tells me, and uh, uh, you know what, it tells me in a special way that God uh, has provided ways in our life that we can get in contact with him and, uh, and allow him to give us the spiritual growth that we stand in need of. And you know, uh, I think this message right here can go out to anybody. I, I, you know, that's what the Word of God is. It's a Word that's not a, of any private interpretation. Uh, uh, you know, when it's a spiritually written Word, so therefore it must be spiritually discerned. Uh, uh, you can't study out a, a spiritually written Word uh, without having the Spirit of God about you. But uh, uh, you know what? I think it's uh, uh, toned down enough to where the one that's lost and out in the world and don't know Him, uh, uh, we can hear the Gospel and through the power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit, uh, it begins to come by, it begins to prick the heart and puts a man where he needs to be that before he can be saved. And I, I'm glad to know today that you don't have to be a rocket scientist. Uh, uh, you don't have to have a PhD or anything like that uh, uh, to be saved. I, I believe the Lord uh, toned it down enough through His Son Jesus, uh, uh, through the preaching of His Word, that uh, a man could hear it uh, and come to know Him for it's everlastingly too late. So uh, uh, you know what? God has provided the way. It, it's not my way this morning, but it's the Lord's. And uh, uh, so we want to do our best to get that out. And uh, uh, the Lord laid a thought on our heart this morning uh, uh, that we may want to get to you. And like I said, uh, I believe it's time that we begin to grow closer 
to him and uh, uh, to begin to ask him to come in and uh, uh, make a difference in our life. And uh, uh, wherefore we can be different to uh, make a difference to other people. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, maybe the title we want to put on today's message is, uh, is things that can hinder us from hearing. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to tell you, I, I believe it's a very important thing to listen and hear uh, what God wants us to do. And, uh, uh, you know what, I made the statement earlier, a God that I've never seen. And uh, uh, no man at any time has ever seen God. And, uh, uh, you know what, so how do we know he's there? I know he's there because of what's in my heart. And, uh, uh, you know what, I call out to him and uh, I believe he speaks back to me. Maybe not in the audible way that you and I would speak to each other, but he speaks, speaks in that still, small voice. And, uh, uh, you know what, that speaks directly to my heart and uh, he chooses to deal with the heart, the center of life, uh, uh, which man can uh, uh, begin to interpret in a, in a more uh, deeper way in our life. And uh, uh, by using that right there, uh, uh, if we hear what God says, uh, uh, we know in which way we can go to center ourselves in the center of his will. And uh, uh, you know what, now I pray this morning that be what we're found doing. And uh, uh, you know what, I, I think an important thing to know uh, uh, that today how we can hear God is to know that God hears us. And uh, uh, you know, I was thinking about this this morning. And uh, uh, you know what, whenever I call out and uh, uh, you know what, I'm, I'm going to tell you one thing right off the bat. I, I believe that God first from a man does hear a repented prayer. And uh, uh, you know what, we know the Bible tells us that for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. And uh, uh, you know, knowing that right there, uh, I'm going to tell you that there needs to be a time of repentance in your life. There has to be a time and a place uh, uh, where salvation took place. And uh, if you have that in your life, uh, uh, the Lord has a, you have an open line uh, uh, directly to uh, uh, God this morning. And uh, uh, you know what I'm going to tell you, God's a righteous God, one that does not take a, a part in sin. Uh, he hates sin and uh, he always will hate sin. Uh, he, he hates sin, but he loves the sinner. And uh, therefore that's why he made a way through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And uh, uh, so this morning, uh, that repentant prayer must be a part of your life. And, uh, uh, but I'm going to tell you, whenever uh, uh, you repented, you've been born again, and uh, uh, you have that advocate with the Father right there through Jesus Christ, uh, I'm going to tell you, you can go to him time and time again. Uh, and when you call out to him, uh, uh, he will hear that prayer. And uh, uh, you know what? He may not answer it once again the way that you think he needs to answer it. But I, uh, you know what? I'm going to tell you, uh, uh, he has a listening ear. Uh, uh, you know what the writer of the Scripture tells me this morning? Uh, over in Psalms, the 34th chapter, uh, uh, 17th verse and I, I want to tell you that God is able to hear in any state that you're in not going against what I just said a minute ago, but I'm going to tell you that God will hear you in any state. Uh, uh, you just got to make sure that you uh, cry out the right kind of prayer, uh, the right kind of calling to Him. Uh, uh, you know what? Uh, if you're lost and out in the world, don't know Him in a free pardon and forgiveness of sin. Uh, uh, like we said earlier, uh, uh, He forgives that sin, then He heals the land. So, uh, uh, you know, what we're saying right here is is that God uh, only hears a righteous cry. Now, uh, you know what? I'm going to tell you, a sinner, the only righteous cry that we had uh, as a sinner for in out in the world, uh, uh, you know what was to get on our knees and, and get humbled down enough and know, come of a broken heart and a contract spirit and call out to him. Therefore, he heard uh, that prayer. So uh, it says in the 34th chapter, 17th bird book of Psalms, uh, uh, the righteous cry and the Lord hear it and delivereth them out of all their troubles. And I, I, you know what I'm going to tell you, a righteous man, uh, uh, when he cries out, one that knows the Lord, uh, uh, one that calls upon Him, uh, has everything out of his heart. Uh, uh, you know, has everything separated between him and his God. Because I'm going to tell you, if you go on in that scripture right there, it talks about the, the Lord is nigh unto them that, that are of a broken heart and save as such be of a contrite spirit. So uh, uh, you know what, there's a way that a man can get to God. But it must become uh, by humbling himself down, getting to the point uh, uh, to where he can call out to him in the way he can hear him. But the Lord will hear. Uh, so you know what? The next thing we want to get to you before we get maybe uh, deeper into our thought is, is Proverbs chapter 20, uh, verse 12. And I want you to know this morning that I believe God created all things. He made all ways. Uh, he set up a way within you and I, purposed it within our lives, uh, uh, that He'd be able to get in contact with us when we make the decision to humble ourselves down and get to that point. It says that the hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord hath made even both of them. So I'm going to tell you this morning, the Lord provided a way. He put a way in your life, in my life. It don't matter what your stature is. It don't matter what uh, what circumstances you might have going on. Uh, uh, God has placed tools within you uh, uh, today that you can be able to reach Him. And it'll be only through His Son, Jesus. Uh, he is the only way. Uh, uh, you know what the author and finisher of our faith we said earlier, but uh, I'm going to get into a few things right here that I believe uh, uh, that can hinder you, though, uh, uh, from hearing what God may say in return. So one 
once again, we know that God will hear, uh, but when He speaks back, how can we know uh, uh, what He's telling us to do? This is very important for us today. And uh, uh, you know what? Because I think a lot of people uh, uh, don't give themselves time, don't give themselves uh, uh, the, day, the day or the effort uh, uh, to be able to allow God to work in their life. Uh, you know what? They they pray a prayer, and uh, uh, next thing they know, uh, uh, they think that prayer didn't get answered. They're back out in the world. Uh, uh, you know what? That, that, that happens to Christian people. That That's not only the lost man out in the world. And I'm going to tell you, there's a special way. Once again, you got to come if you lost none done. Uh, uh, you got to come of a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Uh, uh, come down to that altar being drawn of that spirit uh, uh, down to an altar of repentance. And uh, that's the only way it's going to happen. But uh, uh, you know what? Even a man that's been born again, uh, uh, been saved by the grace of God uh, uh, through the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, uh, must come today of a humble heart and uh, uh, begin to get down to a point to where he can hear what the Lord says. And uh, uh, you know what? So there's some things that stand in our way. And I'm going to always start out with this right here. I believe it's the most important important thing uh, uh, that maybe we can remember right here uh, uh, and, uh, it is uh, uh, self-will. Uh, you know what self-will this morning uh, I, I, I've always told, uh, I use the Thompson uh, Chain Reference Bible and I, uh, you know what, uh, it's, it's King James Version but uh, a Thompson Chain Reference is my favorite kind because it, it got a good glossary in the back and, it, and you can uh, reference things up but uh, it goes by topical. And uh, you know on that topic right there, any time that self is placed before anything, uh, uh, rest assured this morning uh, uh, that there is always something bad tied to it. Uh, uh, when self is involved, and self can't be put out of the way, uh, we can't begin to think uh, uh, that we can follow after or hear what God wants us to do. Uh, so you know what, as we're getting into it this morning, uh, uh, self will, uh, uh, you know what, it's something we all have in common. Uh, you know what? Uh, there has not been one man, and I, I'm, I think I'm safe in saying this because the Bible tells us uh, this very thing. There's not been one man that has uh, sometimes uh, uh, placed his own self will in his way instead of what the will of God is. And uh, uh, we failed and come short. Uh, uh, ain't none of us perfect. Not saying that you are. Uh, uh, you know what the Bible says? The only way that you can be perfect, the, uh, the one that walks in the Spirit is the same as a perfect man. So, uh, uh, you know what? We walk in the Spirit, we're walking after the will of God. But, uh, uh, you know what? One that would place uh, his own self will before that uh, uh, can get himself in trouble and therefore uh, have a lack of hearing. Uh, you know what I'm going to tell you? Uh, that, you know, whenever he said he made that ear and that made that eye, uh, you know what, today uh, to the church, uh, he's speaking in a spiritual sense. Uh, a lot of times our eyes are covered, our ears are, are shuttered in because uh, we have allowed ourselves to spiritually be separated uh, uh, from where God uh, uh, first put us in the first place. So, uh, uh, you know what, over in Ezekiel, uh, uh, you know what, it makes this statement right here. Now, uh, uh, over in the 12th chapter, the second verse, uh, uh, just one verse here, it says, The Son of Man, thou dwellest in the midst of a rebellion house and which have eyes to see and, and which have eyes to see and see not they have ears to hear and hear not for they are a rebellious house so I want to start off by saying this morning on, on, on talking about self-will uh, you know what uh, the most common thing I begins to ha begins to happen is rebellion and uh, I want you to look through the scripture uh, I'm challenging you this morning to look it up cover to cover uh, uh, rebellion has always been a spirit of the devil uh, uh, you know it will always be an evil spirit uh, uh, you know what if you've got a rebellion within you uh, uh, then it's because it's been put there uh, uh, you've allowed it to come in uh, uh, take place and rebellion will always separate from God uh, you know what uh, uh, the old song is trust and obey uh, uh, there's no greater thing that you and I can do this morning is to trust in God and be obedient unto what he'd have us do but we cannot do that if we constantly want to rebel and not look or listen to what God has placed within our life uh, that self will can lead us away in that it, it's what we want to do uh, uh, you know what this old fleshly body that I have uh, uh, you know what it'll lust after the world it'll go in that way uh, uh, but that's why I say it's up to us to make sure that our mind is set up on the Lord uh, uh, that heart's been cleansed uh, uh, we didn't put it where we needed to be uh, uh, but you know what when we got that heart cleansed and uh, uh, all cleaned up uh, uh, the renewing of the heart comes the renewing of the mind once again uh, uh, keeping uh, our heart and our mind set up on the Lord it keeps our eyes uh, uh, straight forward our ears wide open uh, to where we hear and see everything going on around us and therefore when we do that uh, and I've, I've, I've been a very good advocate of this I do believe uh, I've said it many times over uh, each and every time especially when you're in the house of God around God's people if you'll keep them eyes and them ears open uh, you'll see God work uh, it, you'll, it, you'll begin to feel the presence of him uh, uh, you know what if, whether it's a prayer or a testimony or a song being sung or uh, the preached word uh, if you'll give yourself time to be attentive uh, to what the will of God is 
this instead of your own way. Uh, uh, not be worried about what's coming after. Uh, uh, you know what? A lot of times we get caught up. We're ready to go eat. Uh, uh, we're ready to go home, watch TV. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm a big sports fan, but uh, I ain't no sports on TV right now. And uh, uh, you know what? A lot of times though, we get caught up. And that's what we want to go get home and do. But I'm going to tell you right now, is to center yourself on God's will. Uh, uh, you know what? You got to push self aside. Forget everything else that's going on. I, I, you know what? I know you got troubles and trials, and I'm not downplaying that. I'm trying to point you to the way to a God that can take care of all things, and uh, He will respond to you. Uh, but first, you may be willing to hear Him, and the first thing you've got to do is get yourself out of the way. Make sure that uh, it, it ain't no part in it. Like I say, every time I stand up by, uh, behind the sacred desk and bring, bring forth God's word, uh, my first uh, uh, prayer is is that I do nothing of myself and only what the Lord had me do. Because uh, I know what I can do. I know how much damage I can make. Hey, you know, hey, to, to look at yourself in, in, in the mirror and uh, I begin to see that you can uh, uh, bring more damage than you can bring help. And, uh, you know, that that's a helpless feeling. But uh, when you got the Lord on your side, whenever you're listening to Him and following in His way, uh, He'll direct your step. He'll direct the path that you need to go in. And therefore, we don't have to worry anymore about how we're going to fail and come short. Because if God's will, uh, uh, we know it'll be done. If God's will that we go and do, do something, it's going to be accomplished. So, uh, uh, you know what? We appreciate that. Uh, Scripture this morning because in a rebellious house, uh, they will not hear. They will not listen to what God's got to say. So you know what? I, I believe we're going to be the house of the Lord this morning. Uh, we need to make sure that we're listening and we're paying attention to what God would have us do. And let's get self out of the way and not be, I'm going to tell you, I think a lot of uh, what's going on here is a good thing. Uh, I see a lot of good messages on here today. And uh, uh, you know what? And uh, uh, throughout these weeks, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I've heard people tell me all the time that they've heard more preaching now and listen to more preaching. Uh, and that, that's a good thing right there, paying more attention to it uh, than they ever have. Now, uh, you know what? I'm thinking about that today. And uh, uh, so we need to be careful as ministers on here uh, to make sure that we're sending out the word of God and not trying to promote ourselves or or even promote the church. I know I'm on Faith General Baptist Church uh, uh, right now, Paige, but uh, you know what? I'm not here to uh, promote Faith General Baptist Church. Uh, uh, you know what? If you want to come out when we join back together, uh, uh, let, let it be done. But I'm going to tell you right now, I'm here to uplift the Lord. I'm here to give you His word, uh, not my word, not, not my opinion today. I, I want Him to be uplifted uh, because when He's uplifted, uh, uh, you know, that's what is the best for the kingdom of God right here right now. And I know things can happen. Uh, you know what? I've got fan, uh, family and friends out in the world. Uh, uh, they need to be saved. And uh, you know what? It may not be me that can uh, uh, necessarily reach out and touch them. And uh, uh, So if I can build up or maybe or maybe give somebody some encouragement today uh, to go and talk to them, uh, that's what I want to be done. And the Lord can work that way. Uh, it may not be of my mouth. Uh, it doesn't have to be that way. Uh, uh, you know what? What needs to be done, though, is, uh, is the preaching of God's Word, uh, uh, the infallible Word of God going out, the power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Uh, that way a man can be saved. But self has got to get out of the way. We need to stop trying today uh, to begin to put ourselves up on a pedestal uh, because you know what? I, I know that I haven't been called to do that. Uh, uh, you know what? I, I don't need to uh, take, take the platform that God's given me and uh, uplift it in my way. Uh, uh, therefore, that I'll be able to bring any glory to myself because all glory be to God this morning. Uh, uh, he's one provided that. So uh, let's move along on in this right here. And uh, uh, you know what? We're not going to try to be as long maybe as what it was last time. Uh, uh, but we're going to let the Lord lead. And, uh, uh, but you know what? Uh, uh, there's another thing we want to get out right here. And uh, uh, the reason what hinders our hearing a lot of times and on the very thing we just talked about and uh, uh, it's, a, it's a shame that we got to talk about this but uh, that's exactly what will happen uh, is that we're too influenced by other people you know what I'm going to tell you I, I've always been wanting uh, uh, and, uh, I've had a job ever since I was 14 year old and uh, I worked at Sonic and uh, uh, you know what and, uh, uh, and there's a lot of bad attitudes when it comes to teenage kids and I'm just here to tell you that this morning uh, uh, you know what people will uh, be quick not to do their jobs because they think they're overworked underpaid and things like that uh, but I'm going to tell you I've, I've always had this thought about me that I'm never going to let it, what anybody else does affect what I do you know, when I, I believe to be a strong Christian today, you build yourself up in the Word and through prayer and uh, uh, searching things out for yourself. Uh, uh, you begin to fill, uh, 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 fill yourself up to the extent to where when somebody else uh, begins to do these things, it's not going to uh, uh, turn you away. Now, you know what? I've heard so many people out in the world today, they say, well, I'm not going to go out to there because uh, uh, so-and-so, uh, I, I know this about them, or I know that. Well, that, that's a shame. I, I, you know what? Christian people are a little like Christian people. But at, at the same time, though, uh, it shouldn't influence what I do. Uh, uh, you know what? If you decide to go out and do something this morning I don't agree with, it shouldn't affect me how I serve the Lord. Uh, uh, if you choose not to get closer to Him, it shouldn't affect me getting closer to Him. And, uh, and vice versa. I'm not just pointing myself out. But uh, uh, you know what? I, that's 
that's the way it happens though. And uh, you know what? We've got to be careful. Guard ourselves against that. And uh, in order to hear God this morning, uh, I want you to know this morning that salvation is individual. Uh, you know what? It's not, you're not going to be affected by anybody else because God made a way through Jesus Christ that you could have an individual relationship with Him. So whenever all the world's going out and dabbling in sin and uh, uh, taking part in those things, uh, it's not going to affect you. You know what I know what, what I mean by that this morning over in Galatians the first chapter. Uh, you know what I, I think about this a, long, a lot of times. I, I like I say I've been pastoring for a few years and I see so many come into the house of God. Uh, they're there for a little while and uh, you know what they're on fire for the Lord and one thing gets said, one thing happens. And you know, before you know it, they're back out in the world. They're, 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 they leave the church and they, they blame it on everybody else and uh, uh, come up with, uh, you know what, they're too easily influenced. And Paul dealt with this right here in Galatians, the first chapter. He says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there are be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Pay attention to what he says right here. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And I, I, you know what? It's time that we mark the word. Mark what it is. And now if you mark the word for what it is, you can also mark those that speak against the word. Say that, that preach another gospel. That, that stand on something that's not true. And I, I, so you know what? When you do that, though, you're not easily influenced by someone else. And I, I, you know what? Like I say, uh, uh, God's worth is truth cover to cover. And I, uh, there's no infallibility to it. And knowing that this morning, uh, uh, you know what? When you hear the word of God, if you're listening for it today, uh, uh, you are going to know that it's him. Uh, you know what? There ain't going to be any doubt about it. Uh, uh, you don't have to ask nobody about it. Uh, it is exactly the way that he intended on it to hit you, and uh, uh, you need to listen to that. And uh, I'm going to tell you what this morning uh, uh, is that uh, I don't believe he's a God of many different spirits. He's a God of one spirit. And uh, uh, you know what? So he's going to tell us all uh, a way to get through it, and he's not going to be contradicting of himself. Uh, so don't be influenced by other people because they're already here. They were here in Paul's time. Uh, they were coming about. Uh, uh, maybe they heard the word, and uh, uh, what they did is what we see going on right now with uh, many different versions of the Word of God and uh, many different ways and styles of preaching and uh, uh, changing worship service around. And uh, uh, you know what? There ain't but one way to worship and that's in spirit and in truth. And uh, uh, there ain't but one Word of God and that's the one that's made out of truth that was spiritually inspired to be written down that you and I can still see has stood the test of time because God purposed it in that. So uh, I'm going to tell you, it ain't going to change uh, uh, just because it's 2020. It ain't going to change just because everybody's on Facebook now. And, uh, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, a good thing, but uh, uh, be careful. Uh, guard yourself up. Uh, uh, build yourself ready that you may be able to hear whenever others may choose to go another way. Uh, uh, you know what we talk on leadership Wednesday night. Uh, uh, sometimes it's time for you to be a leader. And I'm going to tell you, if all the world goes out, if all the world stands against it, I'm going to tell you, it's time for you to stand up and look to the Word of God and know what it says. Therefore, that you're not influenced, but maybe you can be a positive influence to those that have lost their way. And I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of them out there. Uh, uh, you know what? Uh, I heard Granddaddy on here the other day. They was talking about uh, how there's 63 members out there at church and they don't have maybe 10. Well, that's like that at every church. Uh, uh, we got members that are on the board, uh, uh, but they're not in the pews. Uh, uh, they're not fulfilling that covenant that they took in the very beginning. And uh, that's a shameful thing. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, uh, now's the time that we stand up and be an influence to them. Don't be influenced by them, but be an influence to them that they may find their way back to the house of God. And I, I, you know what? I'm not here to put anybody down. My prayer is that everybody get themselves right where they need to be uh, with the Lord in such a way uh, that we can uplift and we can build in our community and, uh, and, and be a shining light to the world. And uh, uh, that's what we need to be here to do. So uh, uh, you know what? There is for uh, don't be influenced by others uh, uh, that seem to go out another way. But uh, uh, the next thing we want to talk about this morning is very important and I, I will tell you I, I, I look to the word of God I know I used this scripture the other day and, I, and you know what I don't give you anything new I might use the same scripture over and over and over again but uh, you know what the word of God's good and I, uh, you know what it'll not fail and I, I, so uh, you know what Jesus he told the Pharisees he said you do err not knowing the scripture nor the power of God you know what there's something that we need to know about today is how our God is who he is what he does and uh, you know what? And there ain't no better way than to live a life of faith in Him. And I, uh, uh, you know what? Uh, uh, there was a scripture that was talked about over in Habakkuk that's used three times uh, throughout the New Testament. Uh, Paul used it all three times. Uh, it says the just shall live by faith. Uh, and uh, you know what? Over in Corinthians it tells us uh, uh, that we'll walk by faith and not by sight. And uh, uh, you know, trusting in God, believing in Him, having all faith that He can lead in every way on uh, throughout this whole walk of life. Uh, uh, you know what? It builds us up, prepares us, and it tells us what kind of character God has. 
lives and uh, uh, what kind of influence He can be in our lives. So uh, uh, you know what? I'm going to tell you, there's no better way to know God this morning by, but by getting into His Word and knowing what He had written down by the spiritually inspired Spirit uh, that came by and uh, uh, touched those men that they wrote it down in, uh, in such a way that you and I can understand it today. And uh, if we spiritually discern it, uh, I'm going to tell you, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a good thing to know. But over uh, over in the book of Isaiah, 55th chapter, very familiar scripture, not giving you anything new once again. But I want you to read this and, and looking at it this way. Uh, when you look at it in a way that we're talking about, we want to hear God. We want to hear what He's got to say. Uh, you know what? If you want to hear Him this morning, uh, you want to know what He's about, you want to know His character, uh, uh, how He performs in His ways, and uh, I'm going to tell you what the Scripture says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither your ways my ways, saith the Lord, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow uh, from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word go forth out of my mouth, that it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So you know what? He's already got a plan in store first off. Uh, but the next thing is we need to realize is that he intends, intends on you hearing his word. But knowing that you want to hear his word today, uh, uh, so look into that scripture, what it tells us right there. Uh, you know what? We don't know the mind of God. Uh, we don't know what his intentions are most of the time. Uh, but you know what? I believe that it is supposed to be a life duty of a Christian person today to get down to a point to where he can search out enough uh, that he can be in the center of God's will. And whatever God does, I believe that he'll tell his children about it. Now, I believe that you'll know exactly uh, uh, what, uh, uh, what, what, what he in, in desires for you to do today. I believe that he'll, you'll know exactly uh, uh, the way he's speaking to you. But first, you must get yourself in a position to where you'll listen to what His Word says. So, uh, uh, you know what? It comes down to this point right now is how much do you want it? How, how close do you want to be? You know what? It's not placed upon anybody else. Uh, you know what? <coughs> Everybody else that's involved in this little video right here, uh, uh, you know what? It's not placed upon any of us. We all have our own individual charge uh, to get to know God on a personal level. That way, whenever He works, us not knowing His way, that His Word will speak to us. You know what I'm going to tell you? I, I, I remember a little drill that we used to do whenever I played baseball. My dad used to do this to us out in the driveway. Uh, we'd get a little plastic bat and uh, uh, we'd stand facing away from him and uh, uh, he'd throw this rock over our head. This is the way we done it. I, you know what? We didn't have much. Uh, but you know what? He, he'd take that rock, he'd toss it over our head and we, we'd have to wait for it to come down into sight before we could even make the decision on where we was going to go with that bat and hit that rock. And you know what? That, that, that promoted hand-eye coordination. We were quick and on a reflex and everything else. That's the way we've got to be with God. Have our eyes set straight ahead, waiting for Him to come by. We may not know where it's coming or, or what's going to happen, but if we're looking for it, if we're waiting on it, when it comes by, we'll not miss the opportunity to make the decision to follow in His way and know what, because of the characteristics of God, because of what He has placed in front of us, uh, it is a solid rock that we can begin to stand on today and it'll go forth the way that He wants it to be done and therefore God will get the glory out. That's part of listening for God. That is part of waiting for God and knowing where His move is. And I, you know what? Like I say, you can't know it, but if you're waiting on it, uh, uh, you'll move in the way that He wants you to go. And that, that right there, I believe, is, uh, is, is the analogy we want to give you this morning that you begin to look to. So, uh, uh, you know what? Once again, moving on. And uh, uh, But you know what another part is? is uh, uh, you know what? And, uh, and I, I don't want to just limit this to the ones that are lost out in the world. And uh, I don't know Him. and I Because uh, I believe that a lot of times is that unbelief. You know what? There will be not one thing that will keep you out of heaven uh, other than unbelief. You know what, I'm going to tell you this one, we can categorize sin all we want to and uh, uh, talk about it in many different ways, and I believe it ought to be called by name, don't get me wrong. I, I think we ought to stand behind a pulpit and, uh, and preach it exactly the way it is. So I call it out, uh, 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 name for name. Uh, you know what, uh, uh, get in depth about it. But at the same time, all those things will be categorized as sin under unbelief. And I'm going to tell you, unbelief will hold you back from hearing God. And, uh, and not only those are lost, but those that have been saved, been born again, those that are in the house of God. Uh, uh, you know what? Uh, you can sit on the pew every Sunday and still have unbelief about you, and uh, you will not hear God. You know what? It, uh, how, how dreadful of a thing to think about a church that cannot hear God. You know, I'm going to tell you today, uh, uh, you know what? I, I, I thank the Lord. Uh, uh, there have been men today that have been listening to the Lord. When troubles and trials come about in our life, and uh, uh, we face obstacles like we're facing right now. They've gotten the knowledge enough uh, to go to the Lord in prayer and seek out the next avenue that we take in order to get God's Word out. And that's where we're standing right now. 
I'm not here to beat my, to, to boast of myself or anything like that, but I, you know what? I, I, I wanted a way that we would be able to get down to the point where we could spread God's Word. And you know what? It's happened more than I ever imagined. I, I waited for that opportunity, and when it happened, I'm going to tell you, we've got people all over the world, not just in the United States. I, I know there's been many different nationalities uh, that have been listening to you. And uh, you know what I'm going to tell you? They, they, they've, got, they've got just as much need as everybody. This whole world has a need, and that need is Jesus Christ. But I'm going to tell you what, unbelief will get us to the point where we won't be able to hear where God wants us to go next. We won't be able to hear what He has laying out before us. So over in Timothy, 2 Timothy, chapter 4, verses 2 through 4, it tell, as He begins to preach this charge, Timothy tells him about it right here. He says, Preach the Word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust they shall heat uh, themselves teachers, having itch, itching ears, and they shall turn away from their ears uh, from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. You know what fables, that's false. That's, uh, that's not truths. And uh, uh, you know what, this morning, if I ever seen a time to where this is true, uh, it's right now. You know what it was like that, that back in Paul, but now it's more magnified than it was then. Uh, uh, you know what, uh, uh, multiplied if you would. And uh, uh, you know what I'm going to tell you, as we begin to think about this right here, unbelief happening to those that would hear. You know what? They, they, they'll hear for a little while and they, they get them itching ears. And you know what? I'm going to tell you, I, one of the things I think happens a lot of times, we forget where we come from. We forget what the Lord brought us from. You know, when you forget that right there, when you forget where the base was laid right there at, the same, at that point in time, uh, you begin to get yourself down in such a rut and that, that backslidden condition that you get in, uh, uh, you know, where, where belief ain't a part of your life. It, it ain't showing up in the way that it ought to be doing for God. Uh, you know what, I'm going to tell you, uh, unbelief uh, uh, ca is caused by a lot of actions that we take. I'm going to tell you, uh, in the church today, it'd be easy for us to lay down and say, well, everything's going wrong. Uh, I, I don't know what else to do. And uh, uh, You know what, I think there's people in that condition right now. There might be somebody on here like that. Uh, you don't, don't know what else to do. Well, whenever you don't know what else to do, uh, instead of giving up on the belief that you have in Him, uh, turn to Him and show that you believe in Him. That's what He wants you to do. He don't want you to turn away. Uh, you know what the ultimate showing is, is that you get out and you do something about it. Uh, pray to him first. And whenever you pray, get ready to act upon it. And when you do those things, it's a, it's a proof that you believe in everything that he can do. Uh, uh, you know what? I remember seeing a sign a long time ago. Uh, uh, you know what? It's one thing to believe. I believe it's going to rain, but it's another thing to take an umbrella. Uh, you know what? We, when we pray to God, uh, uh, you know what? we got to believe in everything that we ask for. we got to believe in everything uh, that, we, that we begin to bring to him. You know, we got to believe that He can act up, that He can show up, that He is an acting God. And when we do that, that today, that's when God speaks back. And when He speaks back, you can hear it. <clears throat> you know what? We asked for a revival to come. You may, it may not have came the way we thought it was going to come, hey, but that's exactly what's happened right now. And I want you to know that I've been revived. Uh, uh, you know what? I've been given a renewness uh, uh, that I was standing in need of. I needed that fire rekindled uh, uh, that was within me, that was placed with me as a seven-year-old boy. Uh, you know what? It's happened. Uh, uh, the Lord answers the prayer, but you got to be looking and listening for it because it's not oftentimes going to come the way you think it is. You know what? It's a guarantee of that. So I'm here to sound the alarm to you this morning. Uh, get yourself ready. Make sure you're right. I've heard Jesus is coming back so many times on here, and I believe it with all my heart. And amen to everything that's been said because I believe that that's exactly uh, what the kind of days we're in at this point in time is that He's coming back soon, ready or not. You know what I think back to a message I heard Uncle Jerry Hollingsworth preach a long time ago. Uh, uh, he said, "Listen, listen, and Jesus is coming." You know what? That right there is some words we need to hold on to. But I, I'm gonna tell you what. Right now, I know that I'm undeserved. I know that I, well, everything that I've been given. Uh, you know what? I've been given uh, things in life by God, and uh, He He desired for me to have them. And uh, you know what? I'm to take them, and I'm to look, and I'm to listen, and find out where He wants me to be with them. And you know what? By doing so, uh, uh, well, you can rest assured today of knowing uh, uh, that He's going to be with you always, and you can believe upon that because the Word of God tells us that. So, uh, but another thing that I think that we're getting to uh, right here, another thing that we fall in, uh, uh, short of, uh, and you know, I think that we can all get if we get humble down enough that we can find this. But don't get so bad. Now I'm not telling you not to get so humbled. Don't get so bad down on yourself. Because you don't hear him, because you because you're getting to the point maybe, hey, uh, that I don't hear God. Maybe he's not listening to me, and I have heard it time and time again. I faced it in my life. It's a, it's happened to me. I, uh, you know what? Maybe I'm too unworthy uh, for him. But I'm gonna tell you what. I'm gonna give you some scripture right here. Uh, you know what? A, a, a feeling of unworthiness, a feeling of guilt. You know what? I believe guilt's brought on by sin. So make sure sin's out of your life. Make sure it's all taken care of. Make sure that it's under the blood. 
Uh, you know what? If you if you got it going on in your life right now, stop. Stop right now. Hey, don't wait for anything else. Stop right now and pray to Him. Uh, ask Him to forgive you. I believe He's just able to do it. If you would just repent. Uh, but I'm going to tell you what today, uh, a feeling of unworthiness and guiltiness only comes by not being assured by the Holy Spirit. Uh, that still small voice that we hear, uh, that speaking, that hearing of God, uh, uh, you know what, if we don't have that in our life, then we get this feeling right here. Over in Revelation, third chapter, I'm going to talk to you about a dying church right here. This, this, uh, uh, this dying church that uh, he begins to speak about uh, in, uh, in, this, in this church. But I, I want you to see, it says, Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and, and hold fast and repent. If there, if therefore thou shalt wa not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. So you know what? I, I chose this scripture right here, and it may not speak exactly uh, to what we, we just made the statement of what there about the feeling of unworthiness and guilt. But I'm going to tell you what, there's a way to keep yourself away from that. There, there is a way given by the Word of God right here. It, it's an example that's spoken in the Spirit right here. Uh, when John was, was in that Spirit, uh, it was spoken to him in such a way it lets us know that there are a few names, even in Sardis, which, thou hast, which, which have not defiled their garments. Stay away from sin. Sin brings about guilt. Sin brings about guilt. And when guilt is there, unworthiness is there. You know what I tell you right now? I'll be the first one to tell you I'm not worthy of everything that I've been given by God, but I've been made worthy by the blood of the Lamb. He gave me an opportunity through His salvation in Jesus Christ. He did not send His Son in vain. He sent His Son that through the whole world through Him might be saved today. So that worthiness is given by believing upon Him. Keeping your garment unspotted uh, from the world. Uh, uh, you know what? Transforming yourself. Uh, uh, making sure that you not be not conformed to the world, but you transformed by the renewing of your mind. That comes because you've got a cleaned up heart. Uh, you're living in the Lord. Uh, uh, being holy like. Uh, uh, holiness is a way of living that we need to get, begin to take on. Uh, it's a way that is, is purposed by God in our life. And uh, uh, by keeping that garment unspotted from the world, uh, uh, then we provide ourselves a way. And uh, you know what I can say? I, I say provide ourselves away but I don't mean it that way I mean it in the way that when we provide ourselves by getting it out of our mind we get it out of our mind that we are not where we need we get our, in our mind to where we're not worthy uh, to have these things but read the word of God what does it say that we being children of God being heirs that we have the promise uh, to be made worthy by the blood of Jesus Christ. And so I'm going to tell you what, get the th thought of unworthiness, get the thought of guilt out of your mind. The only way you can do that is by going to the Lord in prayer, talking it over with Him, making sure you're exactly where you need to be. You know what, I wish I could do it for you this morning, but I can't do it. I, I, you know what, it's laid upon you, so uh, uh, we got to get it out of the way. Uh, you know what, moving on. You know, I got a couple more things that I want to share with you, and then I'm gonna be done. But I, uh, you know what? I and this right here, if I don't think that it ever illustrates what we've got going on, and I, my eyes were opened up to this, is sometimes we're just too busy. Sometimes we're too busy to listen to what God's got to say. You know what? I, hey, shame on us for that. Because I'm gonna tell you what, I, the very first commandment that we were taught as a child is that is that He become first in our life. Uh, you know what I, I'm gonna tell you? That, that, that there's nothing else before him. Man. He's the one that created all that. He was here first, therefore he's first in our life. You know what? He he made the creation, and uh, uh, you know what? Uh, of man and put him up on this earth. And uh, uh, later on, one day after a while, uh, uh, when he sent his son Jesus, now he's performed another creation, uh, a new creature in him uh, uh, that you and I'd be able to follow after him. And uh, and when you're doing that today, uh, uh, why would we get to a point that we were too busy for the very one that purposed that creation in our life? You know what? I'm going to tell you, I'm guilty. I hold my hand up and uh, I'm the first one to tell you right now, sometimes I get too busy to listen to God. Shame on me. Once again, I'm going to tell you, the scripture tells us right here and I, I chose to use this. Uh, you know what? Choices you make. Uh, decisions you make in life lead you to the point. It ain't, it ain't because somebody else got you busy. It ain't because you got a job that keeps you busy. It ain't because you got family uh, doing other activities that keeps you busy. What keeps you busy is the decisions that you make to go do them before you even consult God on any of them. Because the scripture tells us over in James 4, chapter 13, verse, it says, Go to now, ye, ye say, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will give, we will go into such a city and continue there a year, and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanishes away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord, if the Lord will. Uh, we shall live and do this or that. 
But now ye rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore to, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. You know what? That's not what I say. It's what the Word of God says. The Word of God says that we're more worried about going and doing things and uh, uh, tomorrow or next week and uh, uh, we're getting caught up. And you know what? I went fishing yesterday and I enjoyed myself. Ain't nothing wrong with going hunting or fishing. Uh, uh, but you know what? Make sure that God is first. Make sure that you put your time and efforts into Him. Because you know what? If you ain't listening, hey, there might have been something else you ought to been done besides that. You know, that's just that's the fact of it. I'm not telling you today that it's a sin to go do those things, but at the same time, you need to know that it is a sin, though, if you have to go do something for the Lord and you place something else in front of it. Now, there should be no other God before me. And if you do something like that, it places a, a, a God before God Almighty. So I'm going to tell you, uh, that, that, that's the simplest way I can put it. Uh, and you know what I believe the sin of omission right there? The sin of leaving things out? It only comes because you're too busy caught up in the world, and that's what I can do. That's what I do myself as old flesh and body. It tries to pull me away and do the lustful things of the world instead of giving myself over to the Lord and allowing Him to be part of my life. And I, you know what I'm going to tell you? Uh, it's not time for any of that anymore. You know what I'm going to tell you? It's time for us to make a change right now. Make a decision right now that we're going to put God first in our life. You know what? Whenever this old thing's over with and we get back in the house of God, let's keep the same mindset, same heart set that uh, everything else... It's just left on the, on the back burner. Remember the time that we lost all of our freedoms and nearly. Where we had to stay home and we had nothing to do. And all we had was the Word of God and tuning into the Word of God and listening to what the preachers had to say about it and uh, singing those songs, getting closer to Him in those, in those private times. Think about those times whenever when we get back to our busy lives. Think about those times and I guarantee you that you'll be able to hear what God's got for you next. You know what? If you get to that point right there, hey, uh, blessings will pour in, and I believe that you'll not you'll not ever run out of it. Uh, you know what? God God's already guaranteed that. Uh, you know what? It's our own stubborn ways to keep us out of it. But anyway, we'll get to our last one. This is a very uh, uh, one that I probably never even uh, uh, considered. Maybe I know it's in the Word of God, but you know, sin. You know, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna talk about sin once again. Sin is the number one thing that will allow you to get to a point to where you cannot hear the Lord. The Lord will not hear you and because he cannot look upon sin. He will not. It's hid its face from you. But I'm going to tell you, there's nothing that you can't hear him either. And uh, the big the thing that I want to speak about here maybe uh, before we close out this uh, message uh, is the fact of not only willingly sin, do it, doing it and knowing you're doing it. Uh, you know what? We all do that. We, that all takes place. That's all. That's all there. But uh, you know what? We're talking about maybe getting to a point to where you're maybe you're not hearing God to what what He wants you to do, and you want to get to that point. The first thing we need to realize right now is maybe we can't hear Him because we're not only willing to sin, but we're making it all right. We're harboring it. You know what? A harbor. It, 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 you bring in the ships and you and you keep them there and uh, hold them in a safe place, keep them tight to the bank to where we can get back on them. Uh, uh, you you you've accepted them in. Uh, taking them into a safe place. And uh, you know what? I think that's what we get to. Even those that have been born again get to a point to where we harbor sin in our life and make everything seem all right. You know what? We see churches today that are accepting things that are not of the Word of God. I'm here to tell you right now, uh, there, there, are, there are things that are going on that are accepting. Uh, they talk about uh, uh, many times over in different uh, uh, denominations all across the land. And uh, uh, you know what? And I'm going to tell you, there ain't no place for it if it's against God's Word. And you know what? You'll never make it right. You willingly har harbor sin, God will not speak anymore to you. That's, a, that's the way I got to put it to you, and I, I, I can't give it any other way. So it's time to repent of those ways. Get them out of there. Hey, don't, don't make it all right. Because you know what? It's never been all right. And I, I looked at 2 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, 4th and 5th verse right here. It says, For though he was crucified through weakness, he liveth uh, by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live by him by the power of God toward you. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not that your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. You know, a reprobate mind, I had a lot of people ask about what that is. And uh, you know what, you study out the Word of God. I believe a man that's of a reprobate mind doesn't know he's there. He doesn't know that he's, he's forever lost. And I believe that's what a man is when he's got a reprobate mind. Now he's forever lost. He's, he's turned God away so much that God has given him over uh, to believe a lie and be damned over it. Whenever he is, uh, uh, he doesn't distinguish right from wrong. Uh, he doesn't know he's in that condition. But today, 
If you're under the sound of my voice and listening to this right now, if you're if you're here to hear the word of God and you're listening, and you're wanting to find a way to get back to God, to listen to Him, to hear Him in such a mighty way that He can work in your life, uh, I trust to tell you right now that you're not in that condition. You know what? If you have a desire to get back. If you know that you're in the wrong and you need to be there and you need to be exactly where He wants you to be, uh, you know what? Know that you're not there, but you need to realize at this point, right now, make the decision now because there may not be another time to make this decision. Make a decision now that you'll examine yourself. Prove within your own self. And I, you know what? I don't have to have anybody tell me that, I, that I've been saved. You know what? There have been times in my life where I've tried to doubt it. Oh, Satan sneak in, get something there, and I, you know what? Get that feeling of unworthiness coming in. Maybe something I've done in my life uh, uh, got me to that point. Maybe that's not the case with you, but that, maybe it did. And you know what? You get down and you maybe, well, was I ever really truly saved? You know what I'm going to tell you right now? Satan will put that within your mind. He'll, he'll, he'll enact it within you uh, uh, so much to where you might consider it. But I'm going to tell you what, if you'll examine within yourself, uh, go to God and talk it over with Him, I believe the Holy Spirit will come by and it'll prove within you uh, what is within, if, if Christ be in you or not. And you know what? I believe at that point in time, if you make a decision where you really don't know, uh, now is the time that you need to reach out to Him and, and truly be saved. Uh, uh, because you know what? I know that I have a no-so salvation. Uh, uh, one that uh, uh, can't be taken away from me. Uh, I believe that joy was put within me in such a way that the world couldn't take it away from me. Uh, uh, oh, Satan can't take it away from me. Uh, uh, you know what? The only thing I can do is willingly give it up by not examining myself and uh, harboring sin in my life and uh, allowing it to separate me from my God. So you know what, what it says right here? Uh, I believe it's also a warning. It's a warning right now is to give you, the, the Bible speaks expressly of time. It tells about, why does it tell us? It says today is the day of salvation. Now is the point of time. Don't turn him away. Don't leave what you've heard. You know what I, now that you've heard the word preached, there's no more excuse. You need to hold on to it. You need to hold on to what it says, cleave to it, and examine yourself and know where you stand with God. Because I'm going to tell you what, that's the most important thing right now for you to do in order to hear Him. You know what? I encourage you to spend this time in much prayer, much studying. Uh, get yourself in a position to where you can hear what God says. Grow closer to Him. You know what? Because I'm going to tell you what, I, I, I seen a thing on Facebook the other day. I'm going to share it with you. I know you've probably seen it too. Uh, but at, at this at this point in time, I believe it's very relevant. Uh, you know what it says that the church is 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 uh, is, is not that the church ain't here, but it, the church has been deployed. Something like that. You know what? Now the church has been deployed. You know what we've been sent out into the world uh, to give maybe it on Facebook right here. Uh, but most of all, we've been out been to get out in the point in time to where we have to put ourselves in a situation to where we we can get privately with God. We can get in a way that we're not we're not trying to puff ourselves up. We're not trying uh, to, to make those great oracle speeches that, uh, that we hear given a lot of times. We're here to a point in time in such a way that we can be uh, in a, a direct relationship with Him and to get ourselves ready up. Maybe where we can get back, when we get back to the house of God, that we're empowering ourselves in such a way that we bring the spirits of God with us. And I'm going to tell you, when that, when that spirit of God is brought with us, uh, and when it begins to flow from breast to breast, uh, there ain't nothing like it. And it's just a time to build up, to, to empower ourselves to keep going. In a, in a lost nine world to tell them about Jesus Christ and what he's done for us today. So you know what? That's what we got for you now. Uh, you know what? It might have been a little bit longer than what we wanted, but I'm going to tell you, uh, it's not what we want. It's what God wants. And I'm going to encourage you to share it, get it out there. Uh, you know what? I know God intends on his word going out, so help me do that. Uh, you know what? That's what we do as a church. So, uh, we begin to share God's word with the world. Uh, you know what? It, it's that simple. And I'm not here to promote myself or, or anything else. I just think it's what needs to happen. It needs to go out to the world that a lost nine world may be able to hear what the word of God says and know that today is the day of salvation. Now is the given point in time to where God's able. He's richly able and he wants to, to get out there and reach down that hand and pull those out of those fiery pits that they're in. Uh, you know what? They seem like they're down and out. And I know how, I know how it was. I, I, know, I remember that feeling quite well to be convicted of my sin, know where I was lost and undone, but to know that Jesus come by and gloriously save my soul. So you know what? I you know, heard a saying a long time ago that we need to get off the Roman road and get on the glory road. It's always, always kind of perturbed me to hear, hear that, but uh, uh, you know what? But I'm going to tell you right now, uh, the glory that we have in salvation, God, you know what, God, I, all glory be unto him, but whenever he does that, he gives us blessing right back in return. Uh, you know what, to be blessed by God and to bless him in return, uh, you know, that's the greatest thing that we can do. Uh, so let's do that right now. Uh, you know, we ask that you go to the Lord in prayer and uh, uh, begin to seek out what you need to be doing. I, I believe he's got something for each and every one of us to do right now at this given point in time. So you search him out and you know you find out what he wants you to do. Uh, listen for him. Don't listen just to me. Uh, you know what, I believe I've given you the scripture word for word. Uh, uh, you know what, not, not try to, to give you no opinion of mine, 
Uh, but at the same instance right now, know that I'm just but a man. I uh, know what God's got. He can reach, he can, uh, reach out and touch you in a special way and put you where you need you. He needs you to be, and we can all work together. I'm going to tell you right now, it's time for us to work together. Not, not to worry about denomination, not to worry about who believes this, who believes that. Let's preach Jesus, get him out to the world. So we're going to go Lord in prayer, and after that we'll close out. Dear Lord, we'd like to thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you've given us, dear Lord. And we thank you for that scripture that you've uh, placed within our lives, dear Lord, that we can hold on to it and uh, apply it in, a, in such a mighty way that we can go out and uh, uh, better serve you in a lost and dying world, dear Lord. We pray today uh, uh, maybe somebody heard something, dear Lord, uh, uh, that would uh, maybe spark it or ignite something within them, dear Lord, that uh, uh, they'd be able to go out and uh, do what you'd have them do. Uh, I know that I can't do that, dear Lord, so we're placing it in your hands right now. Uh, uh, as it goes out, uh, uh, we know it will not return void, just as you said, and uh, uh, we're, we're praying that that's what exactly what happens, dear Lord. I, I know I am but limited, dear Lord, and uh, uh, we are all limited that's on here today, but uh, at this given point in time, uh, uh, you have an arm that's able to reach out. Uh, uh, there's no place that it cannot touch, so we pray that you do that uh, and have your way in each and every one of our lives, uh, uh, that we be especially expedient in finding your way and uh, about in our life, and uh, uh, we pray today for once again for those that are out there uh, in the workforce on the front lines for this uh, uh, virus right here. We know in your time you'll take care of it, dear Lord, and uh, we ask that protection be given to them in, this mighty, in a mighty way, dear Lord, in this uh, trying time and uh, maybe they can turn to you and uh, uh, realize that you're the one that's performing the work, not them. And uh, uh, you know, don't let us be about ourselves, not to think any highly of ourselves, dear Lord, but allow you to work in our lives, dear Lord. And we thank you for everything you've done for us once again. We pray uh, that you begin to uh, just continue to pour out the blessings on each and every one that's represented here today. But in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.